welcome to the MBS show. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. Yeah, yes, and I have will unveil my plan to take all of Equestrian. Ah! Oh, I've been shot during monologuing. How unexpected. Oh, maybe you, you know what? Uh, do keep monologuing, villains, because it's the right thing to do. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Blay, blay, blay. <laughs> I am reborn. <laughs> I am a magical unicorn, and now I'm dead. You shot a unicorn! Was it pink and fluffy? Yes, it was very big and fluffy. Oh, but anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to do Season 7, Episode 25 and 26, Shadow Play Part 1 and 2, the Season 7 finale. So, what can we say? We've finally reached the end! Yay! I'm excited! Are you excited? I'm excited! Say the end is near, whenever you draw near. The end is near? The end is near, whoa <laughs> uh, So anywho, in this first part, Sunbus discovers Starswell, the bearded's lost journal, and Twilight Sparkle becomes obsessed with saving him from a thousand-year-old prison. And in part two... Starswell the Bearded and the other pillars of Equestria are back from Nimbo and Twilight Sparkle and her friends must work with them to defeat the Pony of Shadows. Ooh. Ooh. So, yeah. <clears throat> the end of the episode seems pretty hardcore and whatnot. Yes. So, I think first impressions are in order. And Silver, my friend, what do you think? Well, this one, what a... Big finish. I mean, you got you have double the cast as normal, mm -hmm. and yet it never feels like it's, you know, where the focus lies. But it never feels like everyone else is just totally superfluous. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed the uh, the characters. I enjoyed the the pillars return. My only gripe was one Celestia and Luna, and their very limited role in what in a story where they arguably have the greatest stakes. But also, uh, the main villain does monologue quite a bit, and ain't nobody shooting him. Shoot the guy! He's the villain! Make with the zap zap! Oh, it's just common courtesy to let the villain finish monologuing. I go by the Japanese Super Sentai rules. You don't attack while they're posing, don't attack while they're transforming. But now, now that's crossing over into My Little Pony <laughs> for the villains. The courtesy does not work. Uh, but Silver, do you think Jiren is strong enough to defeat the Pony of Shadows? <laughs> Jiren basically <laughs> defeats everyone by blinking. <laughs> until, you're, until your name is Goku. Uh, yes. <laughs> but anywho, is it all Silver? I think that's a good deal right there. Yeah. And Seppi, what about you? Coming into this episode, I had not been caught up on the comics. I didn't even read a single Pillar comic, and sadly, I haven't gotten around to reading a Pillar-related comic. So, when suddenly it hit me with all this, like, oh, these are the Pillars and whatnot, it's like, wait, what? What? Since when was this a plot point? I did not know that this was going to be a plot point, but it is a plot point. Where did this come from? Wait, did you not see Campfire Tales and Daring Gun? Oh, I Gun did see and... Campfire Tales. I just didn't associate it with anything other than, like, three stories and whatnot relating to the situation. It went over my head. Then again, most of the season kind of went over my head because I wasn't as invested as I should have been. Uh. So there's that. that. That's also a factor. But when I did watch this episode... Despite, like, the lack of context, I actually enjoyed myself. I mean, we get to see... Can I spoil this? Uh, no, let's not, because I put a foot... Ah, oh, you're no fun. <laughs> yeah, put a foot... You're no fun. <laughs> put a pin on that. We then. get to see somebody who's been very, very highly throughout the entire series, and now that he's here, I have very mixed... Feelings towards him. Yes, put a uh, footnote on that, and well, it's my turn then. So, yeah, this episode was a lot of fun. Um, for a finale, the stakes were high in this one because the main six were about to lose something very precious to them, and not even Discord could have done what the pillars were going to do. So, 
yeah, that, it was that severe. Other than that, we get to see the original main six. So that's cool. And we get some uh, kind of retconning exposition, but more on that later. Mm, true that, true that. And I don't know, this episode was a little fun. I I, I enjoy this episode. Um, This, um, I'm not going to spoil it, but eh, how do I put this? Just going to touch upon it. Uh, the you know I'm not gonna stop because it's spoiler territory because when when I get there um we'll talk about it as for now um I enjoyed the episode it's really fun as a season premiere ender it was awesome but anywho if you have not watched this episode I highly recommend it you do we'll wait welcome back hope you enjoyed the season finale I'm sure we did but anywho um for this one we're gonna do teams instead of scenes because. If we were to go scene by scene, it's going to take us probably two hours, so no. So, we're going to go with teams for now. And we start off with the quote-unquote elephant in the room, and that is um, the discovery of the journal. Like, what does it mean and whatnot? And where's the elephant? Because all I see are ponies. Yeah. Oh, don't be Drex. I, I'm gonna. But still, um... Sunburst here discovered the journal, which was uh, foreshadowed in issue 53 of Friendship is Magic, the comic book, because one of the ponies fell down and he stuffed all the stuff in a barrel and Sunburst spots it barrel. Uh, remember that? Yes, remember kids, loot boxes work. <laughs> you should spend money on them. Yeah. They will never let you down, especially if you buy lots and lots of them. So wait, you wanna wow. you're, you're telling me to buy fifty loot boxes from Overwatch? Okie dokie dokie. Uh that's a terrible lesson. But yes. Okay, um before we officially start, I want to say something about the comic Shadow Play. What was that all about? It has nothing to do with this. Well it had a little bit to do in that this is meant to be a descendant of the Pony of Shadows. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess. But. Ting tang, walla walla bing bang. Bing bang. But no, it's just that I. The way that they mention, or the way that I forgot who wrote the comic mentioned that, oh, um, yeah, issue 51 is going to be um, touching upon season 7 a bit. Ooh, yeah, it did. But. Nothing too extreme because the mentioning of the Pony of Shadows and the reveal of his form was kind of overshadowed by the pillars. Like, I highly recommend people out there reading the Legends of Magic comic book series. That is awesome. And it sets up the whole adventure for this thing much better than that. But anywho, back to the journal. Sunburst found the journal and discovers that, hey, um, here's where Starsoul and his gang were gone, or something like that. Yes, this is where we're all going to make our final stand. Hopefully, someone will give this to my two protégés some thousand years down the way. Mm. Yeah. And Twilight Be are like, oh, we must save them right away! And Sakura's off to the side saying, for three days I had this itch. You ignored me, you stupid witch. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait, where did that come from? Because I still find it very uncomfortable that Twilight's all like, oh, a three-day study session to save ponies we've never met. And with Sakura, she's like, oh, can we get breakfast first? <laughs> oh, okay, all right, then. No, but getting back on track, do you think that this is a good setup for the start of the episode? Well, are we talking about the comic still? Or no, the... the comic can... I'm pushing the comic aside. Com... Oh, my. The, the comic is... Null and void by my account. <laughs> the comic is dead to Norman. Yes. Norman will never forgive the comic. Ah, doom upon the comic. Yeah, and if you think about it, um, Finship is Magic number three with the sirens. That's dead. That's not canon anymore. Oh, most of Finship is dead. Uh, not really. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Changeling comic is dead. Oh, uh, uh, Everything is dead. I feel sad. Yes, around dead. I feel sad it's, now. Doom and destruction, we are all doomed. <laughs> but anywho, yes, let's talk about this episode. And how everything is dead and destroyed. 
<laughs> Welcome to the NBS show where it's Armageddon. Oh, God. Do we get s'mores? All oh, the, the s'mores, s'mores are dead. <laughs> oh, no. That's fine. But anywho, anywho. If the grief is that, the, I guess the shadow lock is not present in this story, and the comics basically made him to be a big to-do, and he is no longer a big to-do, unless he's shipped with Twilight. I don't know. Probably in the future, I don't know. I mean, there's still season eight, and from a synopsis I read online, uh, the pillars are going to be back, so that, yay. Well, that, that gets into further spoiler territory. But uh, basically, we just learned that these are the pillars, and they're so important and so awesome, and everybody knows about them now. Mm-hmm. But I guess Shadowlock's role in all this was to wipe everyone's memory, so this was much less common knowledge. Oh, okay, um, you could say that. I just did. Yeah, it does make sense in that in the sense where Shadow Lock was running all over Equestria, deleting books, and yay! So that way, nobody really know about the history of the pillars, and even he forgot about certain things, and. The way that one of the characters, um, remember the archaeologist mentioning that, oh, um, Rockhoof is just a legend. He does not exist. So that makes sense, right? Well, kind of. History has a funny way of being interpreted sometimes, including, well, I have my own opinions on that scene with the archaeologist and Applejack. Mm. I don't think we're quite there yet. Yeah, yeah. It's just something I noticed because... When you mentioned that Shadow Lock goes around deleting books, it does make some sense. Like, nobody really has a back history of the pillars because they were deleted by Shadow Lock and stuff. And at the same time, too, if anybody catches up to the Legends of Magic issue, even Star Soul mentioned that he thought most of the pillars were made up. He also thought they'd be taller. Oh, yeah, true that. But that's besides the point. And Sebi, what, what do you think? About what? The discovery of the journal and how it starts this whole roller coaster ride of everybody trying to save them or trying to discover what really happened to them. I don't remember that in the episode. What? <laughs> Basically, they're just saying, oh, the, we have fond memories of Star Swirl the Bearded. He was so important to us. That's why we named a shelf and then a wing and then a library after him. Star Swirl's enjoyed a very. You know, they say dying is the best thing you can do for your career. Uh-huh. I, I think Star Swirl kind of proved it. Oh, true that. Yeah, sounds about right. Maybe it was out of pure nostalgia. I don't know. I don't uh, know. But still. Do no, no, the, for weird this is, reasons. This is ponies. Reason. It, it, it's nostalgia. <laughs> uh, but anywho. So with Tat, here comes the setup of, hey, Twilight needs to discover what really happened. And Twilight, oh wow, this is, I'm, I'm getting confused. Twilight and Star are crisscrossing my head. Oh, you're great. You're, go- you're going, you're pulling an ember. Well, y'all look alike to me. <laughs> That's racist! <laughs> but still, um, I'm, I'm trying to get things on track and doing with teams. I'm not really good at it. Silver, why did you take over for a while? All right. So basically, they learned that the pillars of Equestria may not actually be dead. They're just missing in limbo. And thus, a begins the quest to find an answer. And it's a very short quest because, well, apparently uh, Star Swirl just left behind a hologram. Help me, Twilight Sparkle. You're my only hope. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So what I... And this is where I think the episode is very much in high gear because you've got to cover a lot in less than an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Twilight immediately solves this and we are treated to the quest of the main six going all over Equestria to retrieve magical doohickeys. What was your favorite magical doohickey Uh, mission? Let's see. But before that, I I need to go back a bit. And uh, when the main six plus friends discovered the Stonehenge, what did they call it? Pwnhenge. Pwnhenge. When they discovered Pwnhenge uh, and Twilight places the book on, well, how ironically on the pillar that Starswell was standing, it activated the hologram and it showed what really happened. It was Venom. Venom was trying to consume them all. Oh, no. Ah, oh, come on. Living Shadow. I've, I 
you're not wrong in your comparison, Norman, but I've heard it many a time. What, Venom or The Living Shadow? Ev- Venom. No. Everybody loves Venom. Everybody's looking forward to the new Venom trailer. <laughs> the trailer, not the movie. Venom movie. <laughs> the movie. Well, let's face it. Right now, everyone enjoys the, the trailer. The movie is still up in the air. Yep. Okay. Uh, who, who would you use, Silver, instead of Venom? I just use a living shadow. Living shadow. It's, Who's he, by the way? I don't remember. It's a living shadow. He's the pony of shadows. It's, you don't need... He's not the pony of angsty <laughs> symbiotes that have really weird... Really I'd rather comics catch that... the book of shadows. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> any who... Charmed reference. Nobody will get it. Uh, I remember Charm. It wasn't old. I remember that. It was very old. But anywho, yeah, I just need to point that out because, yay, he, he tried to take over the world, of course, by engulfing it in darkness. That reminds me of a certain pony. Hmm, scratch chin. Well, this is where I kind of wish Princess Luna and Celestia, they just discovered this answer. The, the great mystery of what happened to the Pillars of Equestria. So s- surely they're going to take this back to said princesses. Nope. Dwali's all like, I think I can save them. Shouldn't we get the two hyper-powerful alicorns who are students and most invested in this? No, <laughs> this is my show, dang it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. Yep, yep, I, I totally agree with that. Like, they really need that extra firepower, right? I mean, take a look at the movie. Like, <laughs> Celestia, Cadence, and Luna were defeated by a single ball. Like, <laughs> they are not useful at all. <laughs> So Twilight got caught by a cage. Rats. The cage are the ultimate trapping weapon. It could have been a cage match. Oh no, the horror. But anywho, Silver, getting back on track, sorry for derailing you. You mentioned about your favorite um, hunt for the pillars um, item. Well, you got lots to choose from. And personally for me, um, could we pick more than one? Like top three probably? All right, go with your top three out of, well, five. Not six. Oh, yeah, five. So I'll just mention... So Twilight already has the book. Yeah. That's the other thing. Twilight, you're, you're mooching off Sunburst accomplishment. Come on, let's see some hassle. Uh, let, let's go for top let's two see some then. Razzle dazzle. Right, okay, top two. My number two would be uh, Rarity and how she helped uh, Miss Main's flower. No, yeah, she helped the old lady and her garden. That was really nice of her to do. Of course, then we never get the follow-up. Does <laughs> does the lady take better care of the place? Yeah, true. Uh, and if so, do, does it all go to wreck and ruin again? Miss Main comes back. What have you done? It won't be that bad. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, I, I like this one for my second. And my number one is Rainbow Dash with the gorge surfing. That is just so smart of her. Safi, what were your top two of the favorite of the uh, pillar retrieval item retrievals? Main and Rakuf. It's uh, well, who? It's a Rakuf. Rakuf. Oh, okay. I'm frustrated by the Rakuf retrieval because while Applejack has an awesome moment, she then gets all full of herself. If you told that to someone, they might find it preposterous. <laughs> okay, AJ, you're you're right. You you saved a life and are right about Rakuf. No need to rub it in. This lady just had a near death experience. <laughs> there I was mean, a I'd rub it in. Safi, we're going to talk about your morality later. <laughs> what morality? <laughs> it's just like someone just suffered a near death experience. You that's there was a time and a place where I told you so. <laughs> now is not that time. Uh, you you mentioning I there's always time and place where I told you so, and that was the time. Oh, you mentioned that, and it reminds me of one of the Mike Tyson's Mystery Teams episode. Oh, God. Another episode. Mike Tyson? Yeah, Mike Tyson has his own cartoon. Mike Tyson had his own mystery show, like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, but it's more messed up. It was weird. It's fun. Yeah, the case of the missing ear? <laughs> uh, probably. It's gotta be there somewhere. But anywho, continue on. Silver, what's your favorite too? All right. Well, let's see here. Second favorite, I think, would be uh, uh, Rarity and the the Garden. Mm-hmm. It shows. Wow, we all really like that one, huh? Well, it may also have to do with the uh, lack of energy in others. Case in point, Pinky and Fluttershy 
they don't do a whole lot, mostly because we're revisiting characters and scenarios that they've with which they've already contended, like digging out the blindfold and moving the beehive. Fluttershy has already conquered the uh, the zap bees, so to speak. They still show why they're the worthy descendants or inheritors of the of the pillar's power, which is all this is really about. But we've seen them do this. We've seen them handle this already. So it's just repeating. Mistmain's uh, mission is a little bit different for Rarity. And my favorite, Rainbow Dash getting the uh, shield back from dragons, requires wit, cut, skill, and even gives Spike a chance to shine. How often do you get to say that in a season finale? Oh, yeah. Spike gets a chance to shine. Hey, yeah. I'm going to say that again because it bears repeating. Spike gets a chance to shine. Yeah, and that's fun. Like, that is just so awesome. And I, I do, I just don't know. Okay, the easy way for them to settle this is just to, just for Spike to go up to Ember. Ember, I need that shield from Garble. Could you get it for me? And okay, she'll do it because they're best friends. But nah. Oh, but then... But then Spike looks weak in front of the other dragons. Yeah, yeah. But instead, they're doing this, and this is fun. Surfing down lava. And we all know that Spike's not going to get hurt. He's a dragon. He has tough hide, and that won't hurt him at all. But the fact that he might mess up and get humiliated in front of his peers is another thing. And I just like how he just ends, and Garble just says, rematch, best out of two. And you know what? Uh, I'll even race the pony. How about that? So yeah, the way that they're doing it is like, okay, three, two, one, go. And instead of flying up like how I thought they would do, the expectation were twisted. And hey, instead of going, um, that shield's over there, right? I'm just going to take it and go. Yes, it's, it's un Rainbow Dash is not usually known for duplicity, but she was very cunning with that. Yeah. <laughs> Out of character a bit, but still, I like it. Oh, I wouldn't say out of character. It's just not a trait she often shows. Oh, probably. I don't have time for this. I need speed. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. I'm hipping with it, yo. <laughs> yo. But anywho, Silver, um, what's next? On... <laughs> I found this funny. This was uh, the Bronies React crew had this general reaction. All of the all of Twilight's friends just sort of wait in the bushes <laughs> until they have a moment to come in and say, no, mine's the best. No, mine's the best. No, mine's the best. And just like, w did you all coordinate this? <laughs> of course. But one thing I have to... Of course. But one thing I have to point out is that, think about it, think about it for a bit. They used their items to seal away the Pony of Shadow in Limbo. But how do those items go where they were because uh, Sunomila's um, blindfold was in the drain and Flash Magnus' shield was in the Dragonlands and so on. So how did I, those items go from point A to point B? Well, that's the grand mystery. Who moved the items? We never really find out. Hmm. I mean, we'll probably never find out then. Hmm. Oh, well. Yep. But still, um, after coordinating their mine's the best, mine's the best, uh, they place it on their pillars and magic happens. Yay. And so we, our cast doubles. Oy. And this is fun. I, I like this. This is amazing. So Pony of Shadows as a villain, as he makes his grand returns, like, oh, what have you done? You've unleashed Armageddon. Way to go, Twilight. Shaw. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, too, um, let's just point out the fact that with the return of the pillars, so does uh, the Ponies of Shadows. But hey, um, at least everybody came back and that's all good and dandy. Mm, the introduction of the Pony of Shadows, fun. Well, I thought it was pretty cool seeing that ball of darkness just curl up and then spread its wings. Oh, yeah, that is just awesome. That is really awesome. But one thing I forgot to mention is that Starswell is a jerk. I called it Starswell the bearded jerk. I shouldn't be so happy about this, but I am. <laughs> Where did you see that, man? My Rainbow Rocks review. Oh. <laughs> Where? 
when they're talking about how the how Star Swirl banished the sirens. And it's like, yeah, way to go. You, you dumped them off in another universe and said, oh, it's your problem now. Way to go, jerk. Star Swirl the jerk. Star Swirl the bearded jerk. Okay, Silver, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Star Swirl's plan to send him to um, the world of EQG was because that world didn't have any magic and so they would be harmless? Well, except that we saw at the very beginning that they are not totally harmless. They had a whole restaurant under their thrall of antagonism. The antagonizing has begun. So basically, I, what I'm saying is true then. Um, that was his original plan. All right. His original plan, but it didn't work. More than that, he's making equestria problems someone else's problem, which is a pretty jerkish thing in my eyes. And it is. I, the only reason I brought it up is because I've been reading a lot of fan fiction and I was wondering if I got those two mixed up again or not. And he seems to say that I have not mixed them up. So that's good. All right. All right. So yeah, Star Swirl the Bearded Jerk. Mm-hmm. I, I just like how he realized, where are we? We're not in limbo. Uh, who are you, Purple Alicorn? What? You brought us back, you idiot. With us being back, he's also back too. The Pony of Shadows. Oh no. Way to go, super fan. But I just wanted Senpai to notice me. <laughs> Starlight's off to the side. Now you know how I feel. <laughs> And yeah, with that, um, yeah, chaos happens. Um, it seems that we get to see the Pony of Shadows in action, and he seems strong, even though he's been in prison for over a thousand years. He still has powers. But at the same time, he's also yesterday's news. Ah, yeah. This is going a little bit further into the episode, but we quickly learn... The places where he could have drawn power once upon a time are basically no longer in existence. He's been defeated by gentrification. By modernization. That's right. Basically, so I'm going to chalk this up to Celestia because she's the one who shepherded Equestria for so long. Even after Star Swirl was gone, even after Luna betrayed her, Celestia, maybe without even knowing it, made the Pony of Shadows weaker by taking away his uh, power support base. And at the same time, too, if you really think about it, a uh, thousand years ago, ponies didn't really have any light, night life. But after a thousand years, they all go play Xbox or PlayStation or play Overwatch, and they don't sleep. And Luna's having fun with video games. Huzzah! The gaming shall last forever! Yeah, and thus there's the internet outage. Curse you, at and Verizon, and all whatever you have over there. A plague on your houses. <laughs> uh, but carrying on. <clears throat> I, I thought I was carrying on. <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah, so we get to see how powerful the Pony of Shadow is, even though he's still in his weak form. But still, um, he realized that he's outmatched by, what, 12 or 14 ponies uh, ready to throw down. And he decides to take a retreat. So he does. So he did. And he ran away like a scared little nabby pamby boy. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, t- he took the strategic way. He was a puss puss. <laughs> a puss puss. Nabby pamby little girly man. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho. What is that? But anywho. We are greeted to the main six meeting the pillars. Yay, that's awesome. And here's where I think the show suddenly it's you know this is about Star Swirl, Twilight, and as we'll come to know, Stygian mm-hmm. and and uh Starlight. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is sort of there's the main five, there's the pillars. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned before that everybody got their time in the spotlight. I agree with that, but at the same time too, I would love to see more of them. There are well, too many characters, though. Yeah, we've we're up against the wall in terms of, uh, getting all this. You know, there's only so much time and only so many characters. So unfortunately, now is the time where the focus must narrow to key players and a very strong supporting cast. Mm, true, true. But at the same time, too, even though we have only half an hour for this episode, I felt that 
all of the key players had their time in the spotlight just nice like everybody had their time agree no yes everyone had a grand hurrah including spike yay so we get to see um flash magnus hanging out with rainbow dash uh i ship it uh, rarity and miss main and so on and pinkie pie giving a quick explanation about how twilight is awesome because she managed to finish one of your spells that you couldn't finish and became an alicorn. Yeah. Although I still don't know what that magic actually did. What did that spell do besides make her an alicorn, which I think... Oh, it, it pissed off the fans for at least nine months. Arumph. Thank you, Larson. Larson! <laughs> so, anywho, instead of going to Celestia, they decide to go to Twilight's Castle. Yes. Again, just why... I get it. I just we just said this is an overflowing cast. There's only so much they can do. Uh, at the same time, there is that hovering question: Why are you not talking to the princesses? Yeah, it will be easy. Um, I don't know if it will be easier, but what could the princess offer besides? Oh, here's books. Um, if you need anything, do let us know. Oh, I have the raging power of the sun at my disposal. Uh, you're going up against the Pony of Shadows? Hmm, I don't know what a sun-based magic would do against that. But you know, with a strong light, a bigger shadow will be cast. Well, great, then we can have a villain for Season 9. Huzzah! Yay. Or did I just repeat what Kingdom Hearts said? God dang it. Anywho, um, castle, ponies, everybody introducing themselves. Starlight. Starlight's crowning moment for me was when she empathized with Stygian. And was willing to speak up even when Twilight wouldn't talk back to Star Swirl. Because this is the crystallization of her time as a villain. And her reformation. No more of this, oh, woe is me, if only my past were less tragic. Now it's now I feel like she took a step towards putting that behind her and living more in the moment. And so my hope is, and I think we saw a little bit of this in the season 8 premiere, she's more with it now. And, and less guilt-ridden. And I think that's a very good step for a character. And at the same time, too, Star Swirl here is just um, putting Twilight down because Twilight made one silly mistake, which is to bring them back. And he's giving her flack for it. Like, dude, everybody seems to be thankful for it, except you. Star Swirl the bearded jerk. I called it, I called it, I called it, I called it, I called it. Oh, uh, yeah. Sefi, what's your opinion on Star Swirl the bearded jerk? I don't like him. He's a jerk. Well, succinct. So, yeah. Star Swirl here just mentions that, hey, um, the Pony of Shadow needs to recharge in a dark, dark place to uh, suck up all evil energy. Where in Equestria is that? Um, does, does a place like that exist in Equestria? Hmm, I'm guessing probably here, 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 and here. We would later learn that they should have checked the EEA. <sighs> It's dark, it's malicious, and it's apparently highly racist. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, and also you got the greatest villain, the brain. The shadow and the brain, the shadow and the brain. <laughs> One spreads darkness, the other disdain. <laughs> uh, yes, but anywho, that's another talk on another day. So yeah, um, the way that Star Soul is acting like almighty and powerful, and he's... Uh, since he knows a lot, like he's the right thing, like he always is right, and Twilight's down, and Starlight here noticed that this doesn't seem right. Like, couldn't you guys talk to the villain? And Star Soul mentions that no villain can be redeemed and whatnot, blah 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 blah. Apparently, a thousand years has changed since he last lived. Yeah, that's uh, kind of, that's the given. It's like, Star Soul, you've been out of it for a while, dude. You might wanna, you might wanna check yourself, whilst you wreck yourself. And the problem here is, uh, Twilight is saying nothing because uh, she doesn't want to get on the bad graces of Star Swirl again, and is trying to prove herself much more awesome and capable. So she decides to write a spell that could help them, and we'll talk about that spell later on. Uh, the rest of the ponies were given tasks to go all over Equestria to find the ponies of Shadow in said location. We had five, and all five locations were not there because it seems like you guys, like you guys mentioned, the modernization of Equestria 
seems to change the landscape a bit. Um, instead of a flat plain field, there's a gorge. And instead of the darkest place in town, it seems to be the brightest place in town. So, yeah. Meanwhile, I imagine the Pony of Shadows is sitting off in the, the shady hollows. Just be like, ah, oh, come on. Please tell me that pizzeria I liked is still there. Ah! Wait, what happened to Jasper? He was, oh, that's great. The Pizzeria of Darkness became Jasper's pizza Pizzeria. <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> uh, is that Toyosaurus over there? Oh, it closed, Tarsus! Too soon? No, I'll never get to collect all the t my little pony toys. Too soon? Too soon? What is this Amazon you speak of? I will not go to a jungle for toys. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> KB Toys is still alive? <laughs> uh, we're going to date this episode so bad. But anywho. Well, I've been on worse dates. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, the pillars go back to the castle and they catch up. They talk about how similar they are from Rainbow Dash sharing cider to Miss... Um, not Miss Main. Uh, who is the healing pony? I forgot her name. Oh, Mage yeah, Meadowbrook. Mage Meadowbrook and Fluttershy connect and stuff. Even Pinkie Pie and Sunambula and so on. <coughs> and Sunambula. I, I still can't pronounce it. <laughs> Sunambula. 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 <laughs> but, but anywho, um, getting back on track. Oh boy, I, I'm doing this scene by scene. Silver, help me. Well, I can't. You keep interrupting My bad, me. sorry. But, okay. So, basically, we go... Twilight has her grand plan. We're going to use the elements of harmony again so much for those being out of there. But, hey, what do you guys think of the idea that the pillars created the tree harmony, which creates the elements of harmony, which creates the main six and harmony all around? I like that idea. Harmony gold, if I you I like know. that idea. Correct me if I'm wrong. Before they went off, they planted a seed to... Make sure that Equestria will be safe. Or is that just in my head? Yep, they planted a little something to help out the realm. Ah, I like that idea. And it grew. So in some ways, the Tree of Harmony is almost a random force. It was not strictly planned, but it has its origins. Mm -hmm. And I do like how each pillar had their own strength. Uh, what was it again? If I remember right, it was um, hope, strength, beauty, bravery, healing, and sorcery. And that upgraded to become, uh, what must you call this again? Um, laughter, honesty, loyalty, kindness, and generosity, and magic. Not to mention the infamous scene where Pinkie Pie grabs Applejack by the patoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. The booty. The booty, booty, booty. All the ship fix were launched. Huzzah! Yeah, yeah. But still, I, I do like that idea. And also... <sighs> In all honesty, the seventh um, element is not in Equestria, but it is in the other realm, which is surprising to say the least. Uh, yes, empathy. Has that been confirmed? Well, nothing's been confirmed, but I think someone someone on the staff tweeted out the uh, idea. Yeah, I remember hearing that, yes. And I do like that, because with this one here... Uh, if spoiler for the Legends of Magic book comic books, Star Scroll even way back in the day did not acknowledge Stygian. He was so awestruck with the pillars that he pushed Stygian away, saying that, "Oh, who are you again? Oh, you're nobody. Get off my face. You're a nobody." But the rest of the ponies, the rest of the pillars, were good friends with him, and they felt that the way that Star Soul is acting is not fair, but since they were involved in a major beatdown with the sirens, they thought nothing of it. Even back then, Sonambula mentioned that Stygian is important. He could be an element of friendship, because friendship is something, something, something dark side. <laughs> well, it's very important, she said, but that leads us into the difficulties of... Uh... Recounting Stygian's events. And I like I like what they did with Stygian. Oh, yeah. The guy who brought everyone together but then lost himself. Yeah, and just because of a single jerk. And remember, people, whatever you say matters, no matter how 
insignificant you think it is because words hurt. Words can change a person or a scenario or something. So be careful of what you say. Ain't that right, Silver? Travel dog. <laughs> For who, God? Dog mess. <laughs> Safi remembers this. Can't be that old, then. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, but anywho. So we get the confrontation, which at first is just a big tug-of-war. Or rather, a push-push-pull. But then there's Stygian, and we get Twilight being the princess of friendship, saving a friendship. Oh, but before that, we need to mention that Starlight goes to Twilight and says, Um... Your butt is glowing, and usually when your butt is glowing, is a friendship problem. I don't think that sending him away and sacrificing the uh, elements of harmony is the right thing to do. Twilight, I, are you sure you want to listen to that kooky old man? Kooky old man. I don't think anyone would, would describe Star Swirl that way, unless you were dealing with the early comics. <laughs> yeah. There he was, oh, kooky. Yeah, sure. kooky. Although, I will say that that is where Starlight commits the most egregious offense. She steals the eyebrow raise from Applejack. Applejack does not have a lot going for her in terms of attention. I It was hard enough when Fluttershy stole the bit. Now it's Starlight. Really? What's next? Spike? Where was that silver? Yes. I, I want to see the eyebrow raise. Where was that? Uh, that's when they... I believe that was right when the map reveals the friendship problem requires all the main six. Ah, uh, yes. I see it now. And uh, Applejack talks about, oh, Starlight's awful village. Oh, no offense. Yes, we're back to Equestria Girls. <laughs> and the quote from Daredevil, just because you say no offense doesn't give you permission to say something offensive. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> but anywho. But anywho, here's the thing. In my eyes, the Pony Shadows was never the real... He's the lesser antagonist of this story. Star Swirl may be the greater antagonist because he's the one pushing for X, Y, or Z. And... It's up to Twilight and the others to actually overcome their hero worship. So the Pony of Shadows is a force, an instigator, but he is not the dry, he is not the central conflict. But Stygian helps crystallize everything. And that's kind of hard to accept. But this is all about meeting your heroes and realizing that they are still fallible beings. You just gotta that's not to say never meet your heroes. It's just meet your heroes and then re- rediscover them as human beings. That's the best thing to do in my mm-hmm. eyes. I've learned that. No, oh, who was your hero? Silver Quill? No. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Girl, we got to talk about your he- your hero choices. You, you can do better. <laughs> oh, well, uh, there's always a Soldier 76 out there. Oh, uh, yeah, as he viciously beats people. <laughs> yeah, those people deserved it. Like how this cookie old man. These aren't your streets anymore. <laughs> oh, God. But come now, Safi, you, you know me as a human being, yes? Yes, I've I've learned that over the years. Oh, At first, though, you were like a senpai type of deal for me. Like, I must meet him and I must befriend him. But now it's like... How the hell do I get away from him? <laughs> that too how do I kill this annoying old fart <laughs> uh, you were mentioning about Stygian being the chrysalis or Chris, uh, what was it you mentioned crystallization no, Starlight has a crystallization of her character when she reaches out and supports Stygian mm. and that's the central conflict It's it was never it's a, about letting go of preconceptions and being true to yourself even when you're a person you admire is telling you be this way. And for what he says, it makes a lot of sense. Stygian himself, unfortunately, doesn't get a lot of characterization. That's for the comics to mm, offer. True that, true that. All in all, this is I thought this was a good conflict for Twilight. And while he may have been a jerk at the beginning, at least Star Swirl's able to own up to true. it. And I do enjoy the scene where uh, when Twilight was given the instruction to dealt the final blow, we get to see Stygian come out of the shadows for a bit and uh, get pulled back in. And with that, instead of listening to that cookie old man, Twilight decides to listen to her star pupil. And... I gotta get in there! <laughs> yeah! And with that, uh, Twilight meets Stygian for the first time and all 
all is let out. All feelings are let out about how he just wanted to be a part of the team. Like, he thought that by borrowing those items, he could use a Xerox machine and copy them. And at least we'll have a backup for the future. But everybody accused him of stealing it. And he was not given the chance to explain himself. What was it again? Was it the last episode when we talk about this? About talk about it. Like, talk before acting. Communication has never been Equestria's yeah. forte. But still, no. but still, all feelings was that out and everybody felt guilty for betraying Stygian and whatnot. Even Star Swirl, the bearded, seems sorry about it. Well, you should. That was a dickish move. Uh, Starlet jumps in and says, I was a villain once, but Twilight here trusted me. And if that, you too can be reformed. Trust me, there's a whole group of us, including that one pony who decides to betray all of Equestria and sold us to some crazy old man with a stick. Well, you know she, that, right? Yeah, she's on her way. She's she's still gathering steam for her full tempest. <laughs> <laughs> but the day is saved, and then we're like, oh yeah, we were supposed to bring you back to the princesses. Oh, how you've grown. Dang, princess got back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've with everybody saving Stygian from the Ponies of Shadow, Starswell admits that he was wrong and uh, happy day ever after. And yeah, beating the princesses. Until the oh, movie. Yeah. And with that, uh, the pillar says that we're going to go around Equestria for a bit. We're going to do a world tour and see how things are because, hey, we've been stuck in limbo for a thousand years. So we're just going to go party on, baby. Woo! And then we won't be here for when you're invaded and turned to stone. We're great defenders. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to hang our coats because we've done this for a thousand years now. And you got your new crew. Do you what? Whatever harmony now, you got them. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Should we call it episode ends or that hot touching moment or hot touching hug with Starlight and Twilight? Oh, hug between Starlight and Twilight is adorable. Mm. Totes adorb. Yeah. We're at the point now where I feel the most bad for Rockhoof. We've confirmed that his home is rubble. Oh, yeah. Everyone else has something to return Not really. to. really. Um, Flash doesn't have a home. He lived in uh, Cloudsdale. Cloudsdale still stands. True, but Cloudsdale has changed for a thousand years, and it's not the same as he what, what he remembers. Oh, but he'll see he'll see elements of the Royal Legion still. I, I think he's still got a little something to work with. Just a little something. But like you mentioned before, um, Rockhoof, uh, Rockhoof has the bad end of the stick. Like, <laughs> yeah. his, home is tr- he got yeah, his home is trash. Uh, and I guess I don't know if Stygian, Stygian's town. I mean, he has a descendant, according mm-hmm. to the comics. But it's a descendant through like a, a, a brother or sister, you know, his nephew. His great, great something nephew. Or, or, or Stygian had a girlfriend or had a wife when he explored his adventure it could that that could have happened yeah i'm just saying oh norman you are so delightfully optimistic no he's the nerd of the group. <laughs> pretty much yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but with that episode ends oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah so anywho overall thoughts on set ending and set season finale Safi, how about you start us off why me because you deserve a chance yeah, to go first. Ladies first. Meep. <laughs> You're not ready? I don't like going first. <laughs> All right. I, I'll take it then. I'll take it then. So. Okay. I highly enjoyed this episode. The two-parter here was told awesomely well. I like how the first part was the uh, solving the mystery of, oh, what happened to the pillars of Equestria? Oh, they were... At Sponehenge trying to defeat the Pony of Shadows. Oh, and Twilight discovering, oh, they were in limbo. So that means they're alive. So we can pull them back out and save them. And with that causing this catastrophe with the Pony of Shadows and so on. And the characteristics for all of the characters, even Starlight and Sunburst here, well, played well i do like the interaction between the old and the new it's something fascinating to to watch 
that you can just tell that hey, Rainbow Dash and Flash are connecting or hooking up like they melt well. Like, oh yeah. And you get to see Sonambula and Pinkie Pie having a ton of fun and so on. Like, the pairing was just too awesome. I just wish that we had more of them. And yeah, I just think that Star Star's World is a big fat jerk. Till the ending, I think. Yep. And who will go next? Uh, I will. Okay, so... I, I didn't really get to, like, uh, elaborate my thoughts on Star Swirl because I need time to think about it. Star Swirl is a jerk, but he's a jerk who's somewhat right. The reason why Twilight even, like, uh, released him in the first place wasn't because, like, oh, yeah, there's no reason why Star Swirl and the rest of them should be in limbo. I'm just going to let them out so I can meet Senpai. And yes, I know, I, I basically stole this this type of thinking from my boss, Josh, but he was right! <laughs> well, wasn't right, but I agree with his opinion, like in this case on Star Swirl. I, I also really like Starlight. She was the one who was trying to compromise a, um, a solution that didn't resolve in violence and banishment. It was a good episode in that regard, in, in regards to Starlight's character. I loved her. I wanted to hug her. Yeah, and Starlight here has changed a lot. From her humble beginning from mm-hmm. season 4, was it? Or season 5? Season 5, right? Season yeah. 5. Season 5. And I wouldn't say those were very humble beginnings. Oh, yeah. That ending for season 5 was awesome because she... She tore, she tore up something in time, and yeah, and look at her now. Oh, accepting friendship as the um, default or the first thing to do when even changing her hairstyle. Yeah. But still, bowl cuts were not meant to be on mirrors. I don't know. Maybe that she, uh, when she evolves to get more power, she'll get an afro. Yow! Starfro. Starfro. And then she'll have to do a band. Um, Starfro and the, the Starfro experience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what about you, Silver? But, well, I had a lot of fun with this episode. I love that in the first act, all of the main six got at least a moment to shine. Something where you, you see them being proactive and giving their best. And Spike as well. And Sunburst. Starlight is more the voice of caution, but she won't get to show her best until episode two of the two-parter when the when the pillars are restored it's basically we you have to break everything into groups with a few independent actors and i like i don't like star swirl as a person but i like him as a character he's an example of what happens when you link your ego to your what you perceive as your profession or your skill he knows he's a great wizard he knows that he's a very uh powerful But now he's linked his ego, so he assumes that everything he does is right by default because he's the the smartest guy in the room, in the nation even. And that's a good lesson on the the dangers of hubris. And and Twilight is, uh, you know, learning from from this experience not to give in to hero worship. Which, again, Safi, we really have to work on your choice of heroes. If I'm on the list, you're in trouble. Well, if it helps, you're no longer on the list. (laughs) <laughs> Whoop do you do? Okay. Okay. I mean, I know you as a friend and a human now. A human. A human. You are a human. 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 And like I say, it may be a little disappointing that the Pony of Shadows is not this great. He seems to be a menace that's already been kept in check by modernization. Whereas Nightmare Moon threatened to to throw the world into a regression in darkness. This guy seems properly defeated by these newfangled doohickeys. What is these this kids today? iPod you speak of? You kids, no respect, no respect. <laughs> oh, yeah. But a quick poll. Um, who was the best villain for MLP? Like, who, who do you think has the moxie to claim that title? Well, I'm torn. Chrysalis is the most interesting because she's so feral. She is a true monster, but Nightmare Moon 
is the villain that got everything rolling. And the one who arguably has made the most return, even in dream states. Mm -hmm. And so as much as I love Chrysalis as a villain, I think uh, Nightmare Moon claims the greatest villain. Uh, I can see that, but her first appearance wasn't okay. I, I think that could be due because of the time, and it was season one, so yeah. But in all honesty, I, I think the best villain would be Chrysalis. Even though she was defeated, she did not accept defeat. She slapped the hand of Starlight and decided to go on her merry villainous ways. And yeah, I think that she's still out there in the wilds, just waiting to pounce back and get her revenge. So yeah, for me it's Chrysalis. We'll see you in due course, eh? Mm -hmm. And Seppi, what about you? I don't know. You can use Starlight if you want to. She was a villain. I don't want to use Starlight. I like her more as a character now than I did a villain. Yeah, I mean, Discord was one too, so it, the floor is open. Discord! I beg Discord! Any reason? Because it's Discord. He was a fun villain. Alrighty then, alrighty then. Silver, anything to add on to the list? Oh, I, think, I think we've tackled a good deal right here. And I think we've tackled a good episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, well, what are we going to do for next week? Well, having co just completed a season of the show, it's time to get back to the comics, because there are a few tie-ins uh, to this season that we've not yet covered, including My Little Pony issue number 58, in which Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy engage on a quest based on Mage Meadowbrook's notes. Yep, and here's another one of them episodes where the comic came out before the episode. I remember that one well. <laughs> it's a frustration. I know. But mm -hmm. all things in time. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, after the season, um, the movie was supposed to be inserted here. So yay! After watching season seven, go watch movie, and then watch the season eight premiere, and where they, where they summarize the movie continuity. Yay! That means the movie world and the pony world are interlinked. So that means. The Equestria Girl world is in the link too. So someday Sunset Shimmer is going to meet Celestia again. And oh my goodness, my fanfics are going to go off the charts. Oof. Yeah, I think Safi summed it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Safi. Uh, but anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get... A week's early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous i like to thank lurker cat starstream master of lag amy mark charles lucky knight and tristan thank you guys so much you have been really awesome towards me well Seppi, what about you hmm? um any shout outs to do no i'm good so no coffee then no coffee, no twitch, I'm good for right now. Okie dokie dokie. And you, Silva? Well, as ever, folks can find me online on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quill. Uh, check out Equestria Daily every Wednesday as I, as I post a written comic review. And you can find me on DeviantArt where you can find Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight the Friday before each new episode. Yeah. Go cool. watch that because it's fun. It, just looking at the ideas he does that relates to the episodes is just so nuts. And so, that it's a good time all Indeed. around. But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I have been Asafi. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode in the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. This season has been great. On to the next one where we have to go to high school. Yay. <laughs> I've already graduated, Bear. You graduated to the school of hard knocks. Now you need to graduate from the school of friendship. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life.